Hey everybody, how's it going? Travel Man Dan here and welcome to this week's episode of Reading Man Dan. Yep, this is the fourth day I bring you of reading stories for the December 2020 Vlogmas. I'm going to go ahead and read you a story each and every day all the way up to the actual Christmas Day holiday. And today is going to be a really fun, fantastic, probably the most classic Christmas story ever told. And I'm talking about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So sit back, relax, and get ready for a fun show. Let's go! All right, everybody, thanks for hopping on. Appreciate you checking out this episode. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. Ring the notifications bell so you're notified when new episodes come out. Go ahead, give me a like. Put down in the comments below what you liked about this episode or if you can make a suggestion on another book I should read. Let's go ahead and get started. Like I said earlier, today we're gonna to be reading Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And look at this beautiful book hard covered, brilliant artwork. It's a classic holiday Christmas story. And let's go ahead and get started. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the classic story, retold by Thea Feldman, illustrated by Erwin Madrid. Way up at the North Pole, there is a special place called Christmas Town. Families of reindeer live in cozy caves. Elves work at the factory making presents for children. In Santa's castle, Miss Claus makes sure he eats plenty so that his holiday suit fits just right. Everyone loves living in Christmas Town, except for one year when the weather was so bad that Christmas was almost canceled. <gasps> Christmas? Almost canceled? No. Check it out, guys. Take a look at Christmas Town. How beautiful does that look? Giant castle, snow-capped pine trees, people, elves, reindeers, socializing out in the courtyard. One spring, Donner, the lead reindeer who helped pull Santa's sleigh each Christmas, became a proud papa. Yeah, congratulations! He and his wife named their son Rudolph. Soon after little Rudolph was born, his tiny red nose began to glow. Oh. Great bouncing icebergs, exclaimed Santa when he saw this. If Rudolph's nose continued to glow, Santa said he would never make the sleigh team when he grew up. Donner taught Rudolph all the things a young reindeer needed to know, especially to beware of the abominable snow monster. All the while, he hid Rudolph's nose under a cover and hoped it would someday stop glowing. <sighs> Take a look. So, Donner and his wife, they have a little baby and they name it Rudolph. But Rudolph's nose is so bright and is shining red, Santa can't believe it. He tells Donner, you better get that situation under control. If that light is gleaming and beaming the way it is now as a child, he won't be able to be on that sleigh because it'll attract the abominable snow monster. As the months went by, the elves were busy making Christmas toys. All the elves loved their work, except for one. Hermie just didn't have a knack for toy making. Maybe that's just because he dreamed of becoming a dentist one day. This made him feel like a misfit among his fellow elves. Poor Hermie. Rudolph felt like a misfit too. He didn't like the nose cover he had to wear. Without it, his nose glowed as brightly as ever. But Donner was determined to keep that a secret. Oh, first of all, look at poor Hermie, right? He doesn't want to be there. He's got nothing against toy makers. He just wants to be a dentist. And then, if we take a look at Rudolph, poor Rudolph, he's got to wear a nose cover to hide that shine bright red nose of his. And uh, unfortunately, they both feel like misfits. On the day of the annual reindeer games, Rudolph met Clarice, a pretty young doe. When Clarice said she liked him, 
Rudolph was so excited that he flew through the air with joy. Flying was exactly what Comet, the coach, was trying to teach the young reindeer. Everybody was amazed by Rudolph until his nose cover fell off. Oh, look at that, right? Look at, first of all, Rudolph gets so excited that the female reindeer likes him. He jumps up in the air and starts flying around and Comet is pleased, everybody is happy, but that darn nose cover falls off and everybody is shocked. All the other reindeer, except for Clarice, laughed at Rudolph and called him names. <laughs> Comet said, from now on, we won't let Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Rudolph went off by himself, feeling sad. At the toy factory, Hermie was having trouble too. He skipped elf practice so he could fix Doll's teeth, thinking he might fit in better that way. When the foreman found out, he yelled, Come to elf practice and learn to wiggle your ears and chuckle warmly and do important stuff like that, or you'll never fit in. But Hermie just couldn't. He ran away instead. Poor Rudolph and Hermie. Take a look. We have Comet kind of talking down to poor Rudolph, telling him he'll never play in reindeer games. And then we have the chief boss, Alf. And he's yelling at Hermie. And he says, look, this is what you need to be doing. You need to be wiggling your ears. And you need to be chuckling warmly and be an elf. Nobody wants an elf dentist. So both of them ran away because they're so sad. Before long, Hermie and Rudolph met and shared their stories. They decided to go off in the world together. You don't mind my red nose? asked Rudolph. Not if you don't mind my being a dentist, replied Hermie. It's a deal, said Rudolph. On their first day, they heard the abominable snow monster's terrible roar. He must have seen your nose, cried Hermie. The two friends tried to stay far away from that monster. Oh no. Okay, so right here we see Hermie and Rudolph. And they both agree to be friends no matter what. They don't mind if one has a glowing red nose or if one wants to be a dentist. But over here, they're walking away. And look, Rudolph's nose is shining bright. And down here, oh man, over the mountains is the abominable snowman. And he's sure to eat them both if he catches them. <sighs> oh, I'm scared. Soon they met Yukon Cornelius and his dog sled team. Yukon was looking for gold, but he found Rudolph and Hermie instead. Then Rudolph's glowing nose let the abominable snow monster find them all. Thanks to Yukon's quick thinking, they escaped on an ice floe. The ice floe carried them to the island of misfit toys, a place filled with odd toys. <gasps> what is going on here? First of all, Let's take a look over here. Look at Yukon Cornelius. Awesome. Right? He had to go ahead and break this little ice flow away from the chunk of ice because the abominable snowman's ready to get him. And he's ready to eat them all. But then they floated off to this little island, the island of misfit toys. What is going on here? I've never heard of such an island. The ruler of the island. King Moonracer said, A toy is never truly happy until it is loved by a child. Rudolph promised the king that someday he would tell Santa about all these homeless toys. Maybe Santa would include them in his Christmas deliveries to children around the world. Rudolph asked King Moonracer if he and his friends could stay on the island of misfit toys. This is an island not for living things, said the king. It's only for misfit toys. How do you like that, said Yukon. Even among misfits, we're misfits. Oh. But check out King Moonracer, right? The giant lion, and he's looking down upon the crew, and he tells him, look, this island is not for living things. This island is for misfits, okay? But Yukon Cornelius is like, dude, even amongst misfits, we're misfits. 
The king let the friends rest overnight before they moved on. When Hermie and Yukon were asleep, Rudolph slipped away, knowing his nose would put them in constant danger with the abominable snow monster. He didn't want to be the cause of any harm to his friends. The abominable snow monster did indeed find Rudolph because of his glowing nose. He chased the young reindeer everywhere. During that time, Rudolph grew up. One day, he realized it was time to go home. <gasps> so look at Rudolph. He's all alone. He had to leave his friends, Yukon Cornelius and Hermie, because he was afraid that his nose would attract the abominable snow monster, which it did anyway, and he was being chased, but he realized, I, I need to go home. Meanwhile, Rudolph's parents and Clarice had been out looking for him ever since he left. It was now two days before Christmas Eve, and Santa told Rudolph that without Donner, he'd never be able to get this sleigh off the ground. Rudolph was determined to find his parents and Clarice. As he began to look for them, the storm of all storms hit. Oh no, the blizzard of 77! Look at Santa, he's concerned. I need to have Donner here. We'll never get the Christmas sleigh off the ground. And then the storm of all storms hits. Rudolph, he can't even see in front of all the snow that is falling. <gasps> Rudolph had an idea where his parents and Clarice were. In the cave of the abominable snow monster. He made his way there despite the storm and found Clarice in the monster's clutches. <gasps> Put her down, Rudolph cried. The abominable snow monster did and went after Rudolph instead. Wow, look how brave Rudolph is. He went back to the cave of the abominable snowman to look for his parents and Clarice. And sure enough, the abominable snowman had Clarice in his clutches and he was ready to have a little reindeer snack. But Rudolph saved her. He distracted the abominable snow monster and he dropped Clarice. And let's see what happens. Yukon and Hermie, who had been searching for their friends, arrived at the cave just in time. Quickly, they lured the monster outside and they knocked him down with a big rock. Bonk! Then Hermie removed all the monster's teeth. Finally, Hermie got to be a dentist. <laughs> yes, look at that. Teamwork makes the dream work. You have Yukon Cornelius up above here. When the monster came out, he dropped the boulder on him, smashed him. He got KO'd, knocked out, and Hermie was there to go ahead and practice a little dentistry by plucking his teeth out. Ah! When the abominable snow monster woke up, Yukon pushed him back and back and back until the monster Yukon and his dogs all slipped over the edge over a cliff. Whoa, look at this. He pushed them all the way back. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. <laughs> Rudolph and his friends and family were heartbroken when they returned to Christmas Town. When the others heard the entire story, they realized that those who are different are important too. They all apologized to Rudolph and Hermie. The foreman even told Hermie he could open up his own dentist office. And Santa agreed to find homes for the misfit toys. Ah, look at that. So they got back to Christmas Town. All was happy. Everybody made amends by saying that they were sorry. And that's an important lesson that we're going to talk about in a little bit about, you know, just because somebody's different doesn't mean that they're not important. Just then, there was a knock on the door. It was Yukon, his dogs, and the abominable snow monster. Even though they had all gone over the cliff, the abominable snow monster was able to bounce, and so they had landed safely. <laughs> now, the monster was no longer me. He even got a job. He placed the star on the top of the Christmas tree and everyone cheered. Yeah! A puppet of snow monster! Check it out guys. So they all went overboard on the cliff but the abominable snowman was so big and strong that he was able to bounce off the snow and he had learned, well, it's not really nice to go ahead and try to eat everybody. So there he is right there. He's going ahead, he's got a job to do. He's going ahead and putting the star on top of the, the famous Christmas tree there in Christmas Town, and everybody's happy. 
Man, I love it when that happens. The next day was Christmas Eve, but the weather was so bad that Santa could not fly his sleigh safely through it. He reluctantly started to tell everyone that Christmas was going to be canceled for the first time ever. But then he realized there was a way through the storm after all. Rudolph, Santa said, you and that wonderful nose of yours, that nose can cut through the murkiest storm. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Rudolph replied, it would be an honor, sir. And there it is. Check it out. So Christmas was almost canceled. They're concerned the storm is massive. It's mega. You can't even get through it. Might be the first time Christmas is ever canceled. But Santa had other plans. Take a look as he talks to Rudolph and he says, look, Rudolph with that nose so bright, you can go ahead and guide us through the storm. It'll be like headlights on a car. And Rudolph says, I accept. And he is honored to do so. The sleigh was loaded, the reindeer got into place, and Santa climbed aboard. Rudolph took the lead, and the sleigh took off. Santa's first stop, the Island of Misfit Toys. Everyone had an extra Merry Christmas that year, and Rudolph went down in history as the greatest reindeer of all time. The end. Wow. What a magnificent story. What an amazing classic story. The artwork was great on this book and the overall message of it. How, well, just because you're a little bit different, you might have a little bit different interests like Hermie wanting to be a dentist instead of doing the normal uh, worker bee thing of being an elf. Or Rudolph was definitely a little bit different right at birth. He had this giant red nose. It doesn't mean that you're not important. No matter where you're different than other people, that's actually what makes you most special about you so cherish that take advantage of it you know be who you are people I inspire you to be exactly who you are and those people that don't understand that maybe well they will at some point just like all the other people in Christmas Town but mainly I definitely want to go ahead and let everybody know please accept other people for their differences they're just as important as you and well maybe you're not so different but that doesn't mean that you're not important either. Each and every one of us has something to offer in this world and life. And each and every one of us has something special that we bring to this whole human existence. So, I hope you enjoyed this book, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It was so much fun and I hope you saw something cool. Like, well, I definitely like Yukon Cornelius and the Abominable Snowman. Those characters are great. They're iconic to Christmas each and every year. And, well, I thoroughly enjoyed them. I hope you did too. I hope you learned something new and interesting that this book brought across. Like, the importance of all people. And, well, being different isn't exactly a bad thing. It's a great thing. But most of all, most of all, I hope you are inspired to go ahead and maybe get this book for yourself, possibly watch this video again, but definitely go ahead and try to read this. Be inspired by the message. Be inspired by the artwork, by the holiday spirit of those in Christmas Town, and ultimately just really enjoy this book. If you like what I'm doing and you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. Ring the notifications bell. Go ahead and give me a like. Drop me down in the comments below what you liked about this episode. Or if you can make any future suggestions of books I'd read, I'd love to hear from you. I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. If you don't celebrate Christmas, well, Happy Holidays. May you have all the joy, happiness, and love this holiday season sent out to you and your loved ones. Thanks again so much for watching. I'm Travel Man Dan, aka Reading Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.